Okay, welcome back. Uh, There's uh, five minutes to 3 p.m. Markets, of course, are uh, holding with about a 25-odd point cut. Market breath is positive. Financials are doing better. Uh, that's the lay of the land. Jitendra Shriram is with us, Senior Fund Manager at Baroda BNP Paribas Mutual Fund. Jitendra, good afternoon. Good to have you with us here uh, in the new avatar. Congratulations. And I think we're speaking with you uh, in this uh, new role for the first time. Uh, yeah, so, so, so welcome back. Uh, good to speak with you. Yeah. Uh, Jitendra, so what's the... Uh, I want to start with, of course, housing finance and uh, the buzz around Bajaj housing, of course, is, is, is there. Uh, the listed names are already buzzing quite a bit. Uh, just wanted your perspective. Abhishek was telling us that if it doubles, as is expected, uh, it'll be about uh, six times on a price-to-book basis. Uh, so what does this do? I mean, uh, would it trade there? Would it, uh, you know, who knows, read it from there? Because in the IPO, people would not have got enough and they'd want to buy on listing. Or does it pull some of the others up as well, the already listed ones? What, what's the effect? Well, my gut feel is that, you know, given the kind of value creation that the group has done across various uh, uh, vehicles that they have listed on the marketplace, my suspicion is that uh, most people will stay put for the long term in uh, in this, uh, in this uh, with this group. And it is likely to, uh, you know, obviously it will uh, dictate, it will be dictated by the kind of growth rates you see here and all that. But by and large, ever since, you know, uh, uh, you had uh, the largest mortgage player, HDFC, merging with the bank, uh, there is a space for a large player here. So it should not be too much of an issue to uh, have uh, somebody who can sustain with the premium valuation here. Mm. Uh, Jitendra, hi. Afternoon, Reema here. So what's the broad call on the market now for the next six months? Because there is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we've got the U.S. elections. This is a seasonally weak period for global equities. Uh, so what is your own expectation? And um, can we see a price correction, just time correction? And therefore, how is it dictating the way you're constructing your portfolio now? I think uh, it's an interesting point that you raise. Uh, first of all, I think there are... Uh, couple of levers which are there which are probably much more stronger for India. One being the, the growth uh, uh, piece. India remains in haven of growth within the uh, EM space. Also, when you compare it with the Western European markets or the North American markets or China, we do have a much stronger growth and which is likely to continue at least for the foreseeable future. So there is no taking that away from us. So to an extent, if I see the frontline valuations at 21 odd times, I don't think it is a uh, too much of a euphoria there. Uh, uh, without doubt, there may be certain pockets of exuberance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but by and large, I don't think the markets are uh, too uh, 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 too expensive on the balance. The second factor being the cost of capital, uh, which is that you know you have had multiple uh, things which are helping the Indian markets here. First is uh, you have an important event next week, which is a U.S. Fed meeting. And if they contemplate a kind of a rate easing uh, and, and they start on that path, you have potentially global cost of capital coming down, which logically will mean a softer dollar and as, as it is some movement of money towards emerging markets, which typically tends to come, uh, uh, which will find its own, uh, own uh, India will get its own share uh, uh, as growth, growth is quite strong here. Relatedly, I would also say that, you know, India's inclusion into the bond indices which have happened, now you, it also makes uh, another, supple, uh, another you know, demand pocket for Indian papers as well, which also helps bring down, brings down the, uh, the coupon for Indian papers. So all these are areas which are fairly more structural. So you may have a situation where, you know, markets could time correct for, say, a quarter or so, allow for earnings to catch up. But by and large, I think we are quite, uh, we would be quite comfortable with a mid-teen kind of a growth for the Indian markets. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> now, got it. Uh, you know, so just a quick uh, word on IT services, if you will, uh, Jitendra. That's the other, I don't know if it is already consensus. Some say it's consensus, others are still turning positive. Motiral, for example, last week came out with a note saying turning positive. Uh, the, the, you know, generally when you talk to companies, it's not a very clear whether demand is coming back in a big way or anything. Uh, what is your own sense? It's a, slightly, it's a bit of a defensive as well, but global facing. Yeah, so what I would think is that, you know, if uh, US uh, treads down this path of a rate easing, 
one thing for sure will happen is that it will give a kind of a booster shot to discretionary spending in that market. And this is a big market for all the tech names. So to that extent, uh, at least there will be some tailwind arising for the sector. What we'll need to, of course, watch out for is the, the rate at which this discretionary spend comes up, which is, I think, the bigger gray area rather than the very fact that whether it comes or not. But I would think that, you know, uh, at the end of this month, you have a, a Accenture uh, result as well, the full year result as well. So people will be keenly watching out for the commentary, uh, trying to draw some cues for Indian tech as well on how that is going to shape up. But my my suspicion is that you might see some acceleration in the is coming from where we were in the last couple of quarters. Hmm. Uh, no, got that. You know, one thing, uh, Riman, uh, on IT, uh, TCS and some of the larger companies, they, when they talk about the macro environment, they usually do refer to interest rates. Yeah. Rates are too high. We don't know when rates will start to come off. Well, most likely they'll start coming off next week. Yeah. Right? So I don't know uh, what, uh, what it means for IT services stocks immediately, uh, but at least it's something which managements have flagged off occasionally uh, after quarterly numbers, etc. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's Wednesday when we will know whether it's 25 or 50 and uh, that basically is a big powerful signaling effect uh, for other emerging market central banks whether they accept it or not i mean uh, you know so we'll see if that does indeed uh, come true markets i think are slip are slipping a little bit more we're down about 50 points now so 25340 uh, which is around the last high 25333 was the last high uh, and of course i mean yesterday we took that out with that big big move that we uh, saw zomato is down about 3 and a quarter percent uh, you know, you got all these. Uh, Narayana Health is down about four and a half. Uh, I think uh, uh, Aries Life Sciences. Uh, you know, odd uh, one of these. Uh, some of these odd hospital pharma names are uh, sort of uh, coming off a little bit and are, are under pressure. But overall, I mean, in terms of just number of stocks up and down, it's clearly advantage uh, large uh, sort of gainers and what is up right now. And it's a big volume day once again. Make no mistake. EPAC Durables is up about nine and a half percent. Uh, so, again, I mean, I think this week, this, this one has gone up 30%. So, it's like a, uh, it's, it's re-rated in a single week. Uh, PTC is up about 10% right now. Uh, and, of course, the jewelers we mentioned, names like Edelweiss, KDDL is another one, which I'm uh, seeing with very large volumes right now. That's a 11% pop on uh, KDDL. Uh, there's, of course, that subsidiary Ethos, which is uh, the luxury watch retailer, uh, which, uh, which has done well. But KDDL itself is up about 11.5%. Westlife is up about 6.5%, 854 I mean, you go down the list and uh, uh, there's a lot more which is uh, happening at uh, this point in time. Jitendra, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for joining us and running us through what you're making of things. Uh, and uh, we look forward to our next conversation. Thank you and good luck uh, and good to see you again. We'll take a quick Thank you for watching CNBC TV 18. For all our top stories and news updates, follow us on our social media platforms.